Right now, you've probably noticed something a little bit different about me, and uh, you would be right. I'm one year older. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Theo. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm so excited to do this birthday book tag. I have a list of a bunch of awesome books to talk about, some that uh, re really resonated with me, some that were some of the best books that I've ever read, uh, a couple that I really want to read but I haven't got to yet, a bunch that I want you to try. So uh, let's go ahead and go through this. I've seen this make the rounds on a lot of different booktube channels and it's my birthday today. I'm 36 years old as of today, January 26th. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you probably noticed my glasses. I'm a little more old. I'm a little more blind. And that's kind of what's going on right now. So I'm reading off the screen. I typically wear glasses when I read or when I, you know, when I work on the computer, I work in finance. I'm always on the computer. And uh, in my normal life, I take them off and uh, I don't really wear them a whole lot. But I'm starting to realize as I get older, I need them a little bit more and more. So once in a while, you'll see me with these on. Hopefully they look okay. What do you guys think? Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. I have a bunch of prompts, a bunch of books. Let's go ahead. First one is Birthday Cake, a book with a plot that seems cliche, but you adore it anyway. This one I've seen as an answer on a lot of these. Uh, it has to be my answer as well. And that is Faithful in the Fallen by uh, John Gwynn. The first book, Malice, let's talk about that. A lot of tropes. We have, uh, you know, the farm boy, poor farm boy goes on a quest. We have the chosen one. We have prophecies. We have good versus evil. We have angels and demons kind of situation. A lot of different tropes. A lot of things get, you know, turned on their head. I really like the way John Gwynn did this one. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I'm doing a reread this year. It's no surprise or no secret that I love John Gwynn and his books and The Faithful and the Fallen in particular. So that is one that as tropey as it sounds, as cliche as some of the things and some of the circumstances, maybe some of the characters might be or might come across, um, I love it. And the way he subverts these tropes really turns things on their heads and really kind of brings everything together in a way that feels traditional, but really with a modern twist and that, you know, doesn't fall too deeply into those traps. Uh, I just, I love the way he did that. So for this answer, it's going to be Faithful in the Fallen. Next one is Unopened Gifts, your most anticipated book release of this year. I'm going to have to go with my fellow booktuber, uh, Dr. Philip Chase. He is releasing his Edan trilogy this year, uh, staggering it, I believe, every few months for the balance of the year. And we have Alan from the Library of Alexandria, very excitingly, is going to be doing the narration for the audiobooks. I can't wait to both listen to Alan nail this narration and also read this Edan trilogy from Dr. Chase that has been 15 years plus in the making. I mean, you can just feel the passion come across when he talks about this on his channel. I'm so thrilled and so excited for him that this is happening. I know that it's been a long time coming. He's going to be self-publishing this one, and so I cannot wait to try and get my hands on that later this year. That's a huge anticipated release for me, and it should be for you as well. Birthday Presents, a book that surprised you with how much you loved it. I have to go with Frankenstein for this one. This one was on my top five of 2022. Maybe I'll link a card to that video or I'll put it in the description. Um, this was an absolutely beautifully told story, a tragic, emotional story, uh, you know, written very beautifully, very poetically by a 19 year old Mary Shelley back in 18. Uh, 18 and then revised in 1830 something. And it's one of the best books I've probably read. It was just gripping. I mean, it was a little bit slow in parts because it's an 1800s book. But when you take a step back and kind of look at it, it was really just a beautiful story, really emotional, and uh, some really good dialogue between characters, between the monster and Dr. Frankenstein. And it's just, I would highly recommend it. Not your typical horror book. It's not a monster book. It's just a very tragic kind of science fiction tale. And I can understand why it, you know, seeped into pop culture the way it did and really influenced the genre that we know today. All right, The Happy Birthday Song, a book that certainly deserved all the hype it got. Again, I'm gonna link a video, I just did it, but uh, this one has to be a Game of Thrones. It took me forever to get to this one. I won't bore you with the story. You can watch that video if you're curious about my reaction and my review as a first time reader. I'm so happy I finally got to it. It's one of the best books I've ever read, one of the best book ones in a series ever. One of the best fantasy books I've ever read. It just, I was fully immersed and it's been so long since I've really enjoyed and read that quickly a book from cover to cover. I just flew through it. I enjoyed it immensely. And uh, if you're curious about the specific thoughts I had and, and feelings towards it, you can watch that video. But absolutely, this book deserves 
all the hype it got. That's Game of Thrones. Next one is Birth Year, a book that was published the year that you were born. This is another book that was on my top five of 2022 by a new to me author. That's Robert McCammon. And the book published in 1987, which is my birth year, was Swan Song. Uh, this book was one of the best books that I read last year. Like I said, top five, one of the best sort of horror dystopian um, speculative fiction books that I've ever read. Uh, some of the best writing descriptions, imagery that I've read in, in this type of genre. I really liked it. Robert McCammon hit it out of the park with this one. Memorable characters, really dark, gritty atmosphere, uh, thought provoking, quite, quite evocative. Um, you know, this could, this could happen, uh, to the world. And it's a little bit scary to think about. There's a little bit of a fantastical magical kind of element that I won't spoil or talk about too much, but on the whole, it's a dystopian kind of horror book and it was just done so well. And it really moved Robert McCammon to the top of my list of the authors that I want to read way more from as soon as possible. All right. Getting Older, a book that you read a long time ago, but you think you would appreciate it more if you read it as a more mature reader. Uh, I probably have to go with, I came up with Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I think this was published in 1937 and I read it back in school and I remember feeling emotional towards it. I mean, it's very, very heavy thematically and it's just, there's a lot there. Obviously, a lot of you probably know the story and if you don't, I won't spoil it, but it's really just, it's a quite a deep book and quite an emotional book, very beautifully written book. John, St John Steinbeck is obviously famous uh, for a reason. This is basically considered a classic, I think. And uh, it's one that I, I think would land a lot more and probably resonate a lot more with me as an adult uh, now. I do remember enjoying it when I read it. Uh, it was emotional and evolved. I do remember enjoying it a lot when I read it when I was younger. It's, it was emotional, but it's quite, you know, heavy thematically and, uh, you know, a lot of adult themes. And I feel like it'll just resonate a lot more if I read it again now as an older, more mature reader. So I don't know, there's probably something I'll, I'll circle back to, but definitely John Steinbeck of Mice and Men. Next, we have Sweet Birthday Memories, a book that kept you incredibly happy during a sad or demanding period of your life. This one, I have to go with Harry Potter. Um, by no means did I have a bad or demanding or very challenging childhood. I was really fortunate. I was loved. I had friends. But uh, this is one that I just continue to go back to every now and then when I get that itch for nostalgia, when I want to feel that spark, that magic, when adulting becomes a little bit too difficult. And I just want that memory of a simpler time being a child and that magic and that joy that that series provided to me and a lot of people. I'm going to be rereading it starting probably next month with a bunch of friends of mine. Some have already started and it's just one that every couple of years I, uh, I just want to pick back up. So um, yeah, Harry Potter. Next, we have party guests. If you could spend your birthday with any fictional character, who would it be and why? I'm going to give you two answers. One is going to be a proper answer. One is going to be kind of a ridiculous answer. So the first one is Tyrion Lannister. Uh, that's going to be an answer for a lot of people. What an amazing character this guy is. I just read Game of Thrones. I love it. I talked to you about it already. I did that video. I found his chapters just completely entertaining. And I just loved him as a character, his interactions, his wit, uh, just how, what, what he says, how he carries himself, uh, the adversity that he's had to go through and, and you know, address in his life and stuff. And he's just, I don't know, he's, he's hilarious. There's a lot going on up there. And uh, I can't wait to see his arc. Obviously, I watched the show a little bit, but I just can't wait to read through Tyrion's character uh, as I as I go through A Song of Ice and Fire for the first time ever. So if I could sit down by a campfire over a you know, a, a jug of ale or something with Tyrion or a glass of wine, probably. Um, that would be awesome. The other one is I scrolled back through books that I read way back in the day and just trying to get some some cool characters to come to mind. And uh, one was <laughs> a book that I gave four stars way back in the day was uh, one of the Veronica Mars books because my wife and I would agree that uh, Veronica Mars is one of the best shows ever made. And uh, I've read two of the books that came out as well because why wouldn't I? And uh, if I could hang out with one character, um, it would be Veronica Mars because, uh, yeah, Kristen Bell. Yeah. Okay. Time of the season. Find a book that takes place in the season you were born in. Uh, this is one that actually made my top five most disappointing reads. By no means a bad book. In fact, it was it was pretty okay. It just didn't do for me what I wanted, uh, and I didn't enjoy it as much as some people who just adore this book, and that was The Bear and the Nightingale. This one is like a Russian folklore fantasy sort of book, and it takes place in Russia, in the winter, in the snow, and it's just the most wintry, atmospheric book. I mean, you're going to freeze your butt off reading this book. It was so wintry, so snowy, and if that's what you want, 
you're probably going to love it. If you like fairy tales, if you like retellings like that, if you like folklore, and if you like very atmospheric books, uh, I think you'll really enjoy this one. A lot of whimsy, a lot of magic. It's, a, it's, you know, a lot of people enjoy this one. It didn't really land for me. It wasn't exactly my style, but man, was it a wintry book for the winter season. And uh, my birthday is in January. So there you go. Okay, The Color of Love. Find a book that is the color of your birthstone. Uh, my birthstone is garnet, and that most most commonly is red. And so for this book, I'm going to pick uh, book three of the Warlord Chronicles, Excalibur. This is by Bernard Cornwell. You've heard me talk about this uh, a lot, probably, if you watch the channel or you have watched for any amount of time. I love the Warlord Chronicles. It's one of the best trilogies I've ever read in my life. And the conclusion in the third book, Excalibur, was exquisite. I love these books. Uh, I love the Arthur Arthurian retelling. This was my first real experience with an Arthur-like legend, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed Bernard Cornwell's writing. I can't wait to read more. I can't wait to explore other kind of Arthur uh, stories. I didn't really have a huge experience to draw from. I kind of knew who Arthur and Merlin and stuff were. But yeah, in terms of a historical fiction, historical fantasy uh, type book, uh, this one was incredible. And again, as book three, as a conclusion to a trilogy that in my opinion was near flawless. I mean, I really enjoyed these books. This third book was amazing and the cover's red. So Excalibur. Next one is Party Anywhere. Pick a book set in a time period, world or country you would like to have been born in. I'm going to go with another one of my most just one of the best books I read probably ever and definitely last year. It didn't make my top five because another book by this author just beat it out and my rule was only one per author, but that is 112263 by Stephen King. This one is basically a portal fantasy where the guy kind of finds his way back into the late 50s into the 60s and, you know, basically decides to change a few things for the better, what he perceives or what he's told to believe will make the world a better place. So there's a couple things that he's gonna go back and try and change, but during that time, he lives years and years in this kind of era in the 50s and 60s, you know, assimilating and getting immersed in this world and building up to these events that he needs to sort of wait for because he can't just shoot to a specific time. He always goes back to this specific day and so in order to get to where he needs to go, he has to live years in this era. And the atmosphere that's created, the music, the clothes, the cars, you can just picture it, you can smell it, you can feel it. It's amazing. And I've always loved the 50s and 60s. I've always loved that that era of music and uh, even the movies and stuff. Uh, I'm not a huge movie buff, but I grew up watching old movies with my parents and just the old music and stuff. And it, it was just a good time. And I could spend all day. I mean, that book was... Pfft, a thousand pages, 1100 pages. I don't even know. I didn't feel it at all. Um, I mean, you bounce around a little bit, but really you're in the fifties and sixties. And that book is just a beautiful slice of life from an era that I would love to have been born in, love to have dressed in, gone to these dances and driven these cars and listened to that rock and roll. And it was just, I don't know, awesome. I think I would just have to choose the fifties or sixties from 11, 22, 63. All right. The next one is kind of depressing. 30 plus club name a book or series with a protagonist that is 30 years or older. I'm going to have to go with uh, a book and well, a series that I've talked about at length on the channel before. I've also done a dedicated review of book one, so you can get an idea and flavor of where the story might go and what it's about. Uh, this is written by Christopher Rocchio. This is the sun eater series um, with Hadrian Marlowe is the character who is way older than I am. He starts off being like 20 or 30 years standard and ends up becoming like hundreds and hundreds of years old uh, throughout the story because of cryonic fugue and basically sleeping, hibernating, frozen uh, through space travel. Also because he's genetically modified uh, and he's like a very high noble. And so their genes just allow them to live very, very long. This takes place like 20,000 years in the future. And so um, makes me feel a lot better that he is way older than I am. All right, next we have Birthday Memories, a book that represents who you were when you were younger. I'm going to have to go with my book of the year last year. Um, this is Stephen King's it. And I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and say that this book reminds me a little bit of how I was younger, but a combination of a couple characters. So in the care in, in, in the book, you have, uh, first of all, Ben, who I think is my favorite character. Um, I grew up kind of as a heavy kid, uh, made fun of here and there, but I was always not really like I, I had a lot of friends and I had a lot of relationships. Um, but of course, when you're very young, you know, you can get picked on a little bit. So I was always a heavy kid, but also like romantic and smart and very resourceful and quite talented at at 
kind of hands-on things like Ben is. Like Bill, I would always end up being sort of looked to for advice, especially as I got older. I was always pushed to be kind of the leader in a group and steer the ship a little bit, even when I didn't want to. And I was always cracking jokes and pulling voices and trying to get laughs like uh, Richie. And so, you know, this is one that just reminds me a little bit of what it was like to be a kid outside, you know, a lot hanging out with friends, riding bikes and stuff before the internet was a thing. Just very nostalgic and I think is a representation of a lot of kids my age, but that's kind of how we were when we grew up. But this one resonated with me and there were a lot of very, very compelling characters that, uh, you know, I saw a lot of myself in a lot of them. And I think that's why this book works so well for a lot of people. All right, this one is called This Birthday, a book that represents where you are in your life right now. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with one of my favorite books that I've read over the last couple of years. And this one is Frederick Bachman's A Man Called Uva. Uh, he's an old man, he's disgruntled, he's gone through some shit and he is set in his ways. He needs his routine and for the world to just be the way he wants it and not really change. And if it does, he doesn't really want it to bother him. So that's kind of how I feel. I'm an old grumpy man yelling at the clouds and uh, I'm 36 right now, which is basically almost 40, which is almost 50, which is halfway to 100, which is basically dead. So cool. All right. Second to last one is called Every Birthday, a book that represents something that has never changed about you. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to pick one that I haven't read yet. I'm going to pick a book that I haven't read. that has been on my TBR for a while that I actually recently gifted to uh, Kevin, who has an awesome channel. He's also a subscriber and patron. Um, and I'm hoping to read it with him. I've had it for a while. It's Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. This is the Spartan Persian War in Thermopylae. Uh, think, you know, the movie 300, that's kind of this war or battle. And uh, yeah, I, I, my parents are both Greek. I have Greek heritage. Um, obviously ancient Sparta isn't a thing anymore, but my parent, my dad's side of the family is from Sparti, which is Sparta and still is Sparta. So um, I even have my Spartan helmet chain thing, which you can't tell. It looks kind of like a Roman gladiator, but it's not. It's a, it's a Spartan soldier. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, always been and always will be. I'm proud of my heritage. I'm Greek and uh, can't wait to read more historical fiction, not just Greek, some Italian, like Roman stuff, some Asian stuff, but I definitely want to read some Greek stuff and Gates of Fire is supposed to be awesome. So uh, yeah, I'll pick that one. Uh, the last one is Happy Music, a book with some very beautiful and truly memorable quotes. This one, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use a book and series that I talked about already, and that is Christopher Rocchio's Sun Eater series. These books have some of the most beautifully poetic but technical writing, some of the best prose I've ever read in any book ever, uh, not just fantasy or sci-fi. I would urge you to pick up Empire of Silence, and I think you'll be impressed. It's just incredible. There's so many quotes. It's very thematic. Uh, there's a lot of philosophy. Um, there's a lot of historical references that you may or may not pick up on, and it doesn't detract from the story in any way. But he's just, Christopher Rocchio is so smart. There's so much to unpack in these books, and they're absolutely full of beautifully poetic, but also thought-provoking quotes and passages. And I won't give you too many or any here, because I don't want to spoil stuff, but go ahead and read them. Try them if you haven't, and I bet you You'll be highlighting as you go the whole time. So that's it for me, guys. It's my birthday today. Like I said, I'm 36. Thanks for joining me for this. Happy birthday to me. Uh, I hope you got some recommendations out of that list, maybe. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have a really good day. I'm just going to go and have a drink and try and forget that I'm creeping towards my late 30s, nearly 40. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm, I'll be fine. I'll catch you on the next one.